Hey guys, I figured while my baby is sleeping, I might do a quick video. Um, just sitting out the front of my house with the car running. I thought I would talk to you guys about my personal journey with contraceptives um, and you know how, how it all happened for me, all that sort of stuff, just because um, it's so normalized to be on a you know medicinal contraceptive in our society and the way that they came about was very liberating for women and I don't at all discount that. Um, however, the effects that they have on women's health, I don't find that quite liberating and so I have a very, um, I guess, very conflicting opinion on um, on it because I do think that women's empowerment is really important however I don't think that um, basically giving these synthetic hormones is very empowering empowering to women these days contraceptives are not just given for contraception they're kind of a band-aid fix all for polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, endometriosis, and other hormonal conditions like that. If you have an irregular period, if you've got acne, the pill, the pill, the pill, that's usually what people get put on, or maybe it's the Implanon or the injection or the Mirena. There's heaps of different options. I personally was on the pill from about 17 years of age, despite the fact that I didn't lose my virginity until I was 19. And because of all of the messages that I was getting around that time, I just thought it was what you do. Um, so I basically told the doctor that I had an irregular period and it was irregular a little bit, but not really. Um, not as irregular as you might think. Um, and I was getting some period pain, but again, I, really not that bad. Um, if I had a you know healthier diet, I have since learnt, uh, I probably wouldn't get the sort of pain that I was experiencing at the time. Anyway, so I went on it. Um, I didn't lose my virginity till I was 19, nearly 20. And then, even then, like, I lost my virginity and didn't have sex for a while <laughs> um, until I had my first boyfriend at 20. So, um, yeah, that whole time I was on contraception for what reason? I really still don't understand. Um, but about a year later, or maybe a year and a half later, um, I realized that the pill was really hard for me to take, take it on time and all that sort of stuff. And I had some concerns because I had read that taking the pill can um, increase your risk of breast cancer. And when I was 17, my auntie was diagnosed with breast cancer. So obviously that was a concern for me. So I went to my doctor and the doctor put me on the Depo Rivera injection, which I have since learned is actually more of a risk for breast cancer than the pill. So God knows why that was the recommendation, but I liked the sound of it because it's an injection once every three months and then I, you know, um, wouldn't have to worry about anything. So I did that. I took it for, I think it was either a year and a half or two years. I'm not too sure on the timeline. It was a very long time ago, uh, but I took it and, um, as soon as I had like the first injection, I didn't get my period and continued to not get my period for a year and a half after I stopped having the injection. Um, and obviously since learned the reason why that happens as well. Um, but um, so I, I had a few years without a period and I wasn't pregnant. Um, it was just simply because of that. Um, to give you an idea of my mindset at this time, like I was also, while I was taking the pill, um, I didn't really, well, it's not that I didn't understand it, so I'd been given some like fear tactics from people of, of ways that you can get pregnant that aren't sex, and so, or, or like, um, I, I don't know how to really explain it, but basically like there was some times where I now know that they could not have gotten pregnant, but I kind of thought that I may have gotten pregnant um, just because of certain little accidents and stuff that happened while having sex with my boyfriend. Anyway, so I took the morning after pill as well, completely unnecessarily. So, um, 
this was the the lack of education that was going on with me and insecurity and all of these other things just complete anxiety as well so anyway i took the um the depo rivera injection and i started getting back knee and i thought it was because it was also at the time where i started having a gym membership and i was going five days a week so i just assumed it was that and i was you know using antibacterial body washes and all of these sort of things um to no avail mind you um and i was getting acne on my face and um all of these things like that my anxiety was getting really bad but at this time I didn't actually know that I had anxiety so I now know that I've had anxiety for most of my life um, but I actually didn't get diagnosed or slash realize that I had it until a few years later so that happened and then when I started my degree shortly after I started my degree is when I stopped taking the injection and I actually just went off contraception completely as far as pharmaceutical is concerned and just use condoms um and that worked for me really well i to this day have never had a pregnancy scare like i got pregnant but i meant to <laughs> um at that time but i've never had a pregnancy scare and so i just use condoms and that was definitely a really um you know good thing that good decision but it wasn't even like oh con contraceptives are bad i need to stop for me i just like i just don't feel like myself i'm a bit worried about the fact that i haven't had my period in a couple of years i'm going to stop taking the injection and just use condoms and so that's what i decided to do and that worked really fine so i did that and um yeah i like i said i didn't get my period for a year and a half maybe two years after I stopped taking it and even then I was getting my period like every 60 days every 45 days or you know all over the place and I would get it for like ages or I'd just get it for a couple of days and so really didn't understand um what was going on like why it was taking so long for me to get my period all the while I was studying to be a nutritionist at the time and then got my diagnosis of depression anxiety and insomnia all in one about a year after that all happened and it was that was when my period was starting to come back that I got that diagnosis and it wasn't for another couple of years two or three years that my period itself was um, regulated. So I, I, you know, have a cycle with, I think every 28 to, to 30 days, I will have my period for four to five days and the flow is the same. And every couple of months I might get a little bit of pain, but that's usually associated with some stress or sugar intake and things like that. But for the most part, I have a very textbook period. Um, and, when I don't have that interference from other hormones. I have, like I said, textbook period, um, those symptoms that I was getting all cleared up and I, you know, basically monitor everything with, um, with my diet. So, um, and, and like I said, it was very easy for me to get pregnant. So, um, and that's not me bragging, that's just me stating the fact. Um, so anyway, the, the one of the things that I found it, it really affected was um, I started getting thrush and I started getting it really really bad to the point like that year when I was anxiety depression insomnia I was getting thrush really often and I'm not somebody who gets sick very often either and it wouldn't be like I'd take antibiotics and then I'd get up I mean that would happen but I wasn't taking antibiotics very often at all um, I think I had the flu once that year um, and that was that's literally the only time I've ever had an actual th flu um, but I wasn't getting sick very often except for this thrush because the vaginal pH that I had was changed because of all of these hormones that like synthetic hormones that I was taking and um, I ended up getting tested by the doctor and um, she said she now she she didn't quite understand my question when I asked her because I wanted to know what strain she said it was but she said it wasn't the typical candida thrush that people get she said it was this very rare fungus and that was one of the reasons why it was so severe and it was like to give you an idea of how painful it was like I would swell up and I could barely walk I couldn't wear jeans I couldn't wear tights like I lived in Melbourne so I had to wear you know stuff to keep me warm I couldn't wear tights I couldn't wear jeans I couldn't wear 
leggings even um and I'd have to put an ice pack down there and everything sometimes because I was just in so much pain and it was absolutely horrible. So I had that um, recurring for several years um, and it started getting, it, it did start getting better, but I would say it wasn't until I did my big proper detox, the first time I ever did a proper detox a couple of years ago, um, after that, I got one big bout of thrush, the worst that I'd had in years, because it was starting to get better at that stage. And then I haven't had it again since. And that was about two or three years ago. So I truly believe that I just needed to kind of get that out of my system. And that's the reason why I had that last flare up. Um, but yeah, it, it's amazing how much of an in impact medications like this can have on you and how easy it is for us to just start taking it because it's so normalized it's it's just what you do right um i really do believe that the pill had a huge effect and and especially the depot injection had a huge effect on my mental well-being i don't think they were the only thing i have a lot of trauma in my past and um i have you know methylation issues which is basically a detoxification issue um i have a predisposition to a lot of mental health stuff there's anxiety on both sides of my family there's schizophrenia very highly on one side of my family as well um but it's definitely one of those things that contributed to everything that's going on um the other thing is i have really horrible gut health and um I've been since learning and I really do believe that part of that is the fact that I have a tongue tie so I know I have really crowded teeth that one of the reasons why I have such crowding is because I have a tongue tie and I have a really really high palate um so I was only breastfed for two weeks and then I was bottle fed and when you are um when you have a tongue tie you swallow a lot of air and that can really wreak havoc on your gut Plus, I'm pretty sure my mum doesn't have very good gut health. Um, so I probably inherited her gut flora uh, when I was born as well. So there's just a whole bunch of different, you know, contributing factors for me. But I just wanted to share that story because um, I do feel like the a lot of these options are seen as so innocuous. But the reality is, is that they are huge impacts to women's health and we really should be taking charge of our health a lot more i'd i'd happily talk to you guys about you know hormones and everything um or even the the effect of these synthetic hormones on your on your body if you'd like one thing i'd really like to know is do you use any contra contraceptive method do you you know take the pill or the morena the implanon anything like that what sort of things have you used in the past past how have they affected you do you notice any symptoms at the moment or do you use a natural method of contraception um, I definitely advocate for natural as much as you can obviously sometimes it's not possible if you're single you might you know have a, a different perspective on on what contraception you want to take um, slash use See, that's the thing. Even the language around contraception, it's what contraception do you take, not what contra contraception do you use. Just naturally flew out of my mouth. Anyway, I think the impact of contraception on women's health is really discounted. Um, it's seen as this innocuous thing that we just take because you just do. Like, that's why I took it. I didn't have any serious complications with my period. I wasn't sexually active, yet I was on the pill for a couple of years. And, you know, obviously there's conversations about the way that I was parented and all of these other things, um, which obviously can come up. Sure, I, you know, but um, I was just doing what I thought you do. I just feel like the conversation around um, contraception and these things really needs to be um, changed and we need to advocate more for women because all I see in clinic all the time is women who have been taking the pill their whole life because that's what they've been told to do and how devastating the effect of that can be on their mental well-being uh, but also just on their general health 
happen, especially the, the age that I'm at now where me and a lot of my friends are all trying to have babies or having babies, like the effects that these things can have on our fertility, it's a huge, huge impact. And like I've been working on this stuff for years, but if you get somebody who's 35, who's been on the pill their whole life and they've decided they want to come get pregnant, like it, it's it's a lot of work to try and do because of course by that point they want to get pregnant as soon as they possibly can so um it's possible <laughs> we can do that work of course but um yeah it's it just it makes me very sad that's all all right i better go i think my baby is waking up but thanks for watching and i'll talk to you soon my name is miranda from miranda's wellness by the way um i'm a nutritional medicine practitioner in brisbane uh, like, subscribe, comment, etc. I'd love to talk to you again soon. Bye!